Welcome to Step 24, Hurts, Traumas, and Life Patterns. Huh. That doesn't sound like a super fun topic, huh? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> but the pain of hurt and trauma is real and often brings with it consequences of things like addiction or prostitution, divorce, homicide, suicide, all kinds of things that can bring even more pain. And the sooner we learn to recognize and process the hurts and traumas in our lives, the more free we will be to really enjoy our lives. Pain is no respecter of person or age, and often result from hurts, traumas, and family dynamics that can encounter or we encounter uh, well before adulthood, before we even have a choice about it. We can experience trauma when the good things we need are absent or lacking or when bad things that we never should have experienced happen to us. Mm -hmm. For example, not experiencing the affection, acceptance, or protection of a parent or the faithfulness or loyalty of a spouse or friend. We can also receive hurts from disappointments that come in life through circumstances beyond our control. Mm -hmm. For example, a job or relationships or a child that we wanted but didn't receive or the behavior of a parent or a child, a coworker or a spouse. Have you ever wondered why bad things happen to good people? Unfortunately, we live in a fallen world. The Bible talks about it in Genesis 6, 5. It says, the Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth, and he said that everything they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil. Mm. And being a Christian doesn't ensure we will not have pain or suffering. Hmm. That's what I thought when I became a Christian. Life will be, life will be perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought too. But we are interconnected in relationships with imperfect, broken people. And so it's not possible that we're going to avoid encountering pain, mm -hmm. hurt, and trauma. Even as children, we can experience circumstances that are completely beyond our control that cause serious pain. Yeah. The intensity of our hurt cannot be measured by the experience of hurt or trauma. Our suffering may not have been as severe as someone else, but it can still play a pivotal role in forming the foundation of our emotional health. Yeah, it's not the size of the trauma, but it's the impact it has on our heart. So every person's background, perspective, and experiences are different, creating a different response and level of intensity. Some hurts are easily and quickly overcome and forgotten, while others are ongoing, causing deep and lasting pain that doesn't seem to diminish over time. Even though they say time heals all wounds, that's not necessarily the case. Mm -hmm. Hurts and traumas can bring feelings of anxiety, hopelessness, fear, vulnerability, doubt, and shame, which can lead us to believe things that aren't true about God, ourselves, and others. As we learn in Step 23, when we believe lies, we often turn to defense mechanisms mm -hmm. to comfort or protect ourselves. Many of us have been deeply hurt in some way. And this pain can impact our lives in varying degrees of intensity, from minor disturbances to debilitating torment. We all have the need for intimacy and connection, and that need is so strong that when we have been deeply hurt, or we've been denied acceptance through relationship with family or others, or traumatic painful events, we'll often most likely make a desperate, albeit misplaced attempt to protect ourselves in some way. Mm -hmm to soothe the pain we feel, and to avoid more pain. There's this part of our brain, the amygdala, that is like a hard drive, where the memories of our human experience, our emotions, our thoughts, and senses, they get rated and recorded and filed there. So the memories are filed in a way that our reaction to future experience is programmed and directed by the mm -hmm. memories 
paths and emotions of pain, failure, success, or joy restored there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the same way that Pavlov's dog learned that food is given when a bell rings, so the dog would start to salivate when the bell rang, Mm -hmm. even if there was no food there. Our past experience creates memory patterns that cause us to react as we did in the past, even when the original stimulus is no longer there. When a new life experience comes, our brain quickly filters through the library of memories, thoughts, and sensations connected with our past experience. And we interpret and judge our present experience based on that on this data. The tra- traumatic event doesn't need to be of a huge magnitude for trauma to be experienced. The memory mm. of a past hurt and trauma can cause us to think and act to today's circumstances based on the past experience and make a mountain out of a molehill. (laughs) (laughs) This can happen so quickly that our conscious mind doesn't have a chance to catch up to our racing heart Mm -hmm. and the fear that is overtaking us as we unconsciously associate our present circumstances with past experience that prompts the body to respond based on past emotional memories is stored in the brain. Yeah. In the brain. Yeah. I remember when I was a, a boy, I was uh, bit by a scorpion. Oh, wow. Scary. The pain was so intense. And then my hand started to swallow and also numb. It swelled? It got yeah, swollen? Yeah, it was swollen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and the top of that, they start asking me, have you eat pork? I was like, why is that? Because if you eat pork, they have believed that if you eat pork and the scorpion bites you, you die quick. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, well, the other day I was working outside and I lift up a piece so of So that's wood. when you were a little boy. That I happened. was a little boy. Oh. Today, we're talking about 45 years later, uh-huh. I pick up a piece of wood and I, got, I felt a paint in, my, in my, uh, one of my fingers. And I was like, oh my, it's in the scorpion. That's what I thought. <laughs> And uh, and so I started looking. I didn't find anything. Well, but the memory went back 45 years. We're trying years. to remember if you ate pork or I something. Know, yeah. <laughs> All these uh, emotions came up. Yeah. But I look at it. It was just a little splinter that went in and it, it was it was hurting. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah, but that happens to us all the time. You mm-hmm. know, like we react, we react. Uh, to today's circumstance based on something in the past and we, we assume, yeah. you know, things that aren't true. So yeah. hurt and trauma can cause pain and fear that can bring with them a sense of betrayal mm-hmm. and powerlessness that affects our willingness and ability to <clears throat> trust, to have hope, and it can motivate us to find comfort and protection in in a multitude of ways. Mm-hmm. We are all guilty of seeking pain relief when we should be addressing and dealing with the source of pain. It is an old problem that we see all the way back to Adam and Eve's self-attempt mm-hmm. to cover sin, fear, and shame. Yeah, fig leaves were an inadequate attempt to mm-hmm. undo the pain and consequences that came from their decision to agree with the devil's lie that God was withholding from them what they needed. Mm-hmm. In the moment of your pain or strong emotions is when Satan will come to offer you a solution that seems good, but his Mm -hmm. suggestions are designed to kill, steal, and destroy you. That's so true. He'll whisper in your ear that if you want to feel better, just go have a drink, go have a smoke, overeat, watch pornography or something. And he he may suggest things like leave your wife or drive off a bridge. Mm -hmm. Or drive your wife off a bridge, you know, or (laughs) or do something, this other destructive thing to stop your emotional pain. (laughs) I mean, we're laughing, but it's really true. I mean, Mm -hmm. he he does make those kind of suggestions. Yeah. But this can only uh, provide temporary or momentary relief for a eternal problem and often brings greater problems, destruction, and pain to our lives. You have a choice. Mm -hmm. You can be strong in your own flesh and suck it up when, you know, the pain comes and you want to go protect yourself or comfort yourself. You can give in to the temptation of the devil, or you can allow God to reframe your perspective and maybe reveal to you a lie that you're believing. Replace it with this truth and change your perspective because it's the truth that sets you free. Mm -hmm. And give you peace that passes all understanding, even in the middle of your greatest pain. 
This is the moment when you can choose to abandon false blankets of security and comfort and the lies attached to them and trust God to be your source of truth, protection, and comfort. How we deal with hurt and loss will most likely depend on our ability to see what that painful event has done or is doing in our heart. If we refuse to allow God to reveal to us the things in our heart and heal the hurts in our heart, Mm -hmm. we can set in motion this dysfunctional pattern or defenses to help comfort and soothe the pain or protect us from feeling it. Like a broken arm that is not set properly, it may fuse together and heal improperly. We may learn to adapt to the way the arm has reset improperly, but we will most likely not be able to use it fully in the way it was designed to be used. Yeah, and that's how this class is hurts, traumas, and life patterns. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly how we come to have dysfunctional life patterns mm-hmm. by adapting to our pain with unhealthy defense mechanisms. And then that gets carried on mm-hmm. from you know our family through the generations. Mm-hmm. When we do not or cannot process negative emotions from painful experience, they can become trapped in our body or soul and over time can lead to physical complications Mm -hmm. or not allowing us to experience freedom and causing us to overact based on our past experience rather than actual present reality. There are instances when our traumatic experiences get stuck in time Mm -hmm. and it makes it difficult for us to move on past that experience. Mm -hmm. And two people may be in the same accident and one recovers Mm -hmm. uh, from the trauma in a few weeks or months while the other carries the emotion the emotional trauma for years Mm -hmm. or for life and then any similar circumstances or sound like screeching tires or a crash can take them emotionally back into the intensity of that original trauma when someone has a trauma bond each time they get in a similar situation they feel anxiety and uncontrollable terror, terror, and they're essentially reliving the original trauma because they're stuck there. Mm-hmm. When we have a trauma bond, no matter how many times we got in a plane or car and driven down the same road with no accident, those positive experiences cannot override the stuck emotions of past trauma. It is a memory that time has not healed. When our emotions get stuck in past trauma, we can allow God to get us unstuck Mm -hmm. and bring our emotions, which is our emotions that are stuck, into the present. Mm -hmm. We can ask Him to do a reboot and clear all unnecessary and detrimental memory files. Just as He redeemed man from the fall and reconnected us to new life in Christ, resolving our sin with His power, Mm -hmm. He can redeem our broken memory files and reprogram us with His truth. Mm The good news is that we are not limited by our past experience or the way our brain uh, has interpreted and stored memories to reignite emotions and and fear and anxiety from the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the voice of truth can give you a higher eternal perspective of who you are and what you have that will destroy the giants that are mocking you. Mm -hmm. Our past no longer has to define our future. You know, when the 12 spies in Numbers 13 went to spy out the land, yeah. 10 of them came back with a fearful report saying that they're, we're like grasshoppers in their yeah. sight. We can't go in there. They were basing their dismal outlook on how they saw themselves, and they were basing their future hope mm-hmm. on their years of past humiliation and slavery in Egypt. Mm-hmm. But two of the spies came back positive about their identity and their future in the promised land. Mm-hmm. We can allow God to redeem the story of our past so that like the children of Israel living in Egypt, we no longer have to live in slavery to past experiences or emotions. Mm -hmm. While acknowledging our past experience and pain, we can ask God, we can ask the Holy Spirit, just go to Him and say, this is so hurtful, this is so painful, I don't know what to do with it. Ask Him to access and defrag our memory files and unlock them, update them with present truth. That over the last several years, 
We've had many similar yet not traumatic safe events of this same type, mm -hmm. and we no longer have to respond based on one traumatic event. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hurts, traumas, and life pattern can back us into a corner and cause us to live in a defense, defensive mode. When we do this, we hide our unique gift and talents and fail to fulfill our purpose and destiny as image bearers of God. Good and bad can happen together. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe we love our mom dearly, but she was abusive. Mm -hmm. Or we adore our dad, but he was never around. We can have a great life and still have pain. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's easy to minim minimize mm -hmm. or deny our hurt oh, and yeah. pain, and then we don't look for resolution of it. Mm -hmm. So we might say, oh, it's okay. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not a big deal. Yeah. They're not a bad person. Mm -hmm. Denying the hurt does not fix the problem. Still recognizing the hurt doesn't fix the problem. Mm -hmm. Neither can we... Um, guarantee that talking to other person will heal the hurt. It might make it worse. Yes. <laughs> bring more hurt. <laughs> yes, the only way those hurts can be healed is bringing them to God. That's it. Part of the reality of living in a fallen world is that much of the trauma we have or will experience cannot be changed or avoided, mm -hmm. but it can be redeemed. The birth of a child is a traumatic experience for a mother. But the joy of holding the baby in her arms supersedes that trauma. Mm -hmm. We can ask the Holy Spirit to reveal new truths, blessings, and good experience that can override, override and supersede past hurts and trauma so that we are able to celebrate God, God's goodness, goodness and presence rather mm -hmm. than be bound to the pain or, or past experience. Our past is not supposed to define our future. Mm -hmm. Jesus' crucifixion was a cruel and painful memory, but it didn't end there. Mm -hmm. The resurrection redeemed the pain of all mankind so that we can transcend those painful moments and enjoy God's truth and goodness in our lives. Mm -hmm. No one is exempt from pain uh, or painful hurts that inflict our soul and the spirit. And we can't visibly see those mm -hmm. injuries of, yeah. of the pain like we like could a physical cut see. or a broken bone, but we feel them just as deeply and they need proper care and attention in order to heal. Mm -hmm. It is not so much about having willpower not to do the things we don't want to do as, as it is about finding the root hidden beneath the surface of our pain. Jesus died to reconcile us into a right relationship with Father. And from that right relationship with the Father, mm -hmm. we can relate rightly to others, even if they don't relate well to us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, our need for significance, security, and love must be satisfied. And to find our satisfaction and value in God alone, we must first uncover and confront whatever issues have caused us to turn to counterfeit things and people for intimacy. Mm -hmm. And as we do so, He will heal us and restore us to freedom. Amen. That's like good news. There's an audio below this video at step 24 mm -hmm. on the My Journey website where we pray a prayer for healing of hurt and trauma. Mm -hmm. Take the time to listen and agree with the prayer. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you in the next portion where we talk about life patterns and dealing with relational hurts.